Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. Um, first, we'll start with gratitude. It's so important for you to be grateful for the things that you have in the moment, because if you're wishing to expand your life, whether that's financially, um, in any sort of form, if you're not grateful for the things that you currently have, if you think that you're going to appreciate things that come your way, the things that you're asking for, if you can't even appreciate the things that you have now, that's why you see people that are like super mega wealthy and then, you know, they are just sad inside is because they never learn to truly grasp gratefulness from the get go. So let's take a minute to whatever you're using as your form to pr practice gratitude. Um, I personally have a faith-based planner where it's in there every single day. It has three people or three things that you want to say in prayer. And then I have three things that you are grateful for this morning. So let's just take a moment to write that down um, in whatever form. You can use a piece of paper. You can use the five-minute journal, which is something that I actually started with when I started practicing gratitude. Like this business has opened so much for me in my life. Um, my life has completely flipped around since I started three years ago. Um, I can't even begin to describe. It's not even just like that. Yes, the products have changed my life. Yes, the people I had met in this business had changed my life. Yes, the income has changed my life. But more than that is the things that I was taught along the way, how to, how to be grateful, how to self-develop myself, which is such an important key to business. Like a lot of people will say that it's self-development with the paycheck. And it's so true because if you're wanting to grow and expand, um, you got to figure out what are the areas of my life that I need to work on first in order for me to lead others. And that's the reason why I wanted to talk about leadership today, because I think it's leadership is the foundation of everything that we do. And I think there's a misconception that like it's this skill that you acquire that you have to um be this perfect person or you have to be this person that can like speak on zooms or speak in front of a bunch of people and you have to you know have every single word you say be super inspiring and then that's not actually what leadership is leadership is just influence and um if you're wanting to grow a team if you're wanting to gain more customers if you're wanting to grow your audience on social media it all starts with leadership and I'm going to kind of break down what leadership is. It's something that needs to be an identity within you. It's not something that you do. You don't just lead. You are a leader. And I will explain why each of us has that piece with inside of us. Um, leadership, like I said, is influence. So if you take a step back from the business and from your social media and all that, all that stuff, we all have a level of influence in our life whether you can see it right now or not, if you have a friend circle, you have influence because technically you influence those people to be friends with you, right? If you have children in your home, you're influencing them on a daily basis, which is basically trying to convince them to eat the dinner that you made instead of them just wanting chicken nuggets and french fries every single day. Um, so we have influence and in all these levels of our life and so if you take a look at those things that you're influencing that you might not see as leadership and really embrace them, that is how you can start applying like that. It's not just something I do. It's just part of me. I am a leader. And if you're in this space and you're wanting to, you know, get to the next rank, you have to, you have to embody that you are a leader. So I'm going to break it down to like, how do you lead on your social media? How do you lead your team? And then how do you lead your customers? Um, but the very first thing that you need to focus on is how are you leading yourself on a daily basis? Um, if you're looking at like what truly, like what is the, what are the qualities in a person that people are willing to follow? There's a couple things that come to mind for me. And I mean, you can think back to any specific person in your life that you can think of that 
had influence of, over your life or that led you in your life, whether that's your, your upline, maybe it was somebody that you encountered in a previous job. Maybe it's, um, you know, like a big, big name leader that you see in your life. What are some of the qualities that all of those people possess that make you want to follow them? And a couple that come to mind for me is the very first thing is, is this person trustworthy? Trustworthy? Do they do what they say? Because if you're expecting to have influence over somebody, like let's, let's break it down to the example of your children. Are you trustworthy? If you say, <laughs> I am going to take away your phone if you stay out past 10 o'clock to your teenager, and then they come home at 10, 15 and you don't take their phone away. Do you expect them to come back at 10 the next day? No, because you're not following through on your word. You're not doing as you say you're going to do. And as it relates to the business, I think of like the things that you're asking your team to do, are you, are you doing them yourself? Because if, if you're not doing the things that you're asking your people to do, then that erodes your confidence. And whether you can, like, they can't, obviously they can't see the things that you're doing on a daily basis. Like you don't have a camera following you around everywhere, but whether you think like, oh, they can't see that I'm not doing these things. So I just had one of those days. So I'm just going to say that I did all the things, right? Um, that erodes your self-esteem internally. And that, and that will pour over in the way that your showing up on a daily basis. So if you're like, if you're breaking promises to yourself, things that you say you're going to do and you're not doing them, you're eroding your trustworthiness with yourself. And that comes out as like, it just, you can tell if somebody is not being truthful, truthful and honest. The next thing is I think if I'm thinking of the leaders and I'm thinking of how I'm going to lead myself, discipline comes to mind. How disciplined are you? Are you um, showing up on a daily basis. Um, are you, you know, you're doing your IPAs every single day. I think as, as far as discipline goes, like if you're telling your kids to, I, and I'm going to relate it back to your kids. Cause I feel like that's a really good example of how you're leading, um, in a different aspect of your life. So if you're thinking like you tell your children that they have to keep their rooms clean, but your room is completely disarrayed like they're not going to see you executing that discipline so then how are they going to emulate that same discipline back are you you know getting up on zooms are you showing up on social media like how are you showing discipline the next thing i think is super important because people need to buy into something that you're selling right either whether that's you know, you know, through a team, whether that's for your customers or just people that are going to get samples, like you have to, again, influence people. The most important piece of that, I think, is that you're demonstrating you truly care about other people. Now, your demonstration of care might look different than somebody else's demonstration of care, but if the people aren't at the center of what you do, you might get followers for a little bit, but you're never going to invoke inspiration into people because they don't, they might see it as like, you're just trying to do something for your own personal gain, or they might see at first, like, Hey, this looks shiny and nice from the outside. But then when they get into your organization, you're not showing that you truly care about that person as an individual. And then that's why you see people fall off because when they reach difficult times in their life, and they don't feel like they can come to you because you care about them. They're just going to fall off the face of the earth. So you have to be demonstrating care. Now, I think this is a very, very, very fine line that you have to dance on. Um, I think you need to build relation first, definitely. But you can't let that overshadow and cause you not to not to hold people accountable because I see so many people that like, they just want to be friends with everybody. Right. And this isn't my first experience with leadership. Um, I actually, most of my life, I would say, um, I have held some sort of leadership role, whether that was in high school being 
one of the captains of cheerleading or whether that was in when I used to work for a banking organization and I was a manager there. Um, I managed another real estate company. And one thing that I noticed is that if I became too close to people on a friendship level and then didn't hold them accountable, it was detrimental to that person, which then ended up being detrimental to our organization. Because if you're not holding them accountable, you don't really care about them. You're just allowing them to go off to their own devices and you're just being this friendly face. But holding people accountable is demonstrating care. Because you, if you truly have people at the center of what you're doing on a daily basis, whether that's with your customers or with your, your team, if you truly care about that individual, that means that you care about the dreams that they have. You care about the goals that they personally have. You care about their life, right? And the things that they're looking to accomplish. So if you're just allowing them to continuously slack off, it's, and, and I'm going to elaborate on this because there is a line with that as well. But if you're just allowing them to slack off, like if they say, yep, I'm going to do these things and you're just trusting them day after day, but then you're not seeing the fruits of that labor, like you're not seeing their social media grow. You're not seeing them post on social media. You're not seeing them post their stories. You holding them accountable is going to help them towards their goal. So it's something that needs to happen. You're not a villain. You're not being a boss. If you are coming from a place of care, you will tell them like, hey, I know that you said that you wanted to get this $4,000 bonus. Or I know that you said that you wanted to get this $12,000 bonus because it's going to help you with X, Y, Z. And I understand that it is sometimes hard when you're, you have a life, when you have things going on, maybe it's a job outside or things happen or because I mean, life is going to slap everybody in the face every once in a while. I know those things are going to happen. But if you want to create this life, if you want things to be less stressful in the future, because that's the reason you're so stressed out is you're working so many hours and you're away from your kids and you can't get all the things done, then you need to break off 15 minutes where you can do these posts? Is it that you're struggling with what to say? And you can elaborate and ask them some like really um, fact-finding questions to know like what is at the root of the reason why they're not actually doing the things that they either say they're going to do or that they're telling you they're doing. Because often it's not just surface level. Um, there's usually deeper things beneath that. But are you demonstrating care? Now, here's the thing. We obviously have limited time as leaders, right? Because if you are building an organization or even just you're in a business owner mindset, there's lots of things that are on your plate. You have, you know, you want to make sure you're taking care of the current customers you have. You want a new customer acquisition. So you're trying to send out samples. You're focusing on your personal social media to grow that. You have other, other team members that are, demonstrating leadership of their own. So you want to pour into those people. Now, if you're continually coming back to somebody and they, they aren't willing to take the things that you have to say and apply them, and you've had multiple conversations with them, sometimes your care is saying, this isn't the best thing for you right now, or your care might be like, Hey, you, if when you're willing to actually put in the work and the things that you say you're going to do, then we can have a conversation because you care so deeply about the team members that are actually doing the things that they say they're going to do. You can't waste all your time on somebody that isn't willing to step outside of that, of their comfort zone or whatever, deal with whatever's going on in their life. You can't just keep pouring all your time into that person because then you're not leading the one that's actually willing to lead themselves, right? So that's a really fine line that you, do, that you have to dance on as well. And understanding that like, just because you say to that person, like, hey, I, I know that you really wanna make this work, but your actions aren't demonstrating that to me at this moment. So like when you're ready, when you're done with dealing with whatever you're dealing with, come back to me and I'd be happy to help you. But right now I need to make sure my time is over here. 
that is demonstrating care to not only the person that needs that help, but the one that's not willing to do the work. Because if you're constantly enabling that person, that's not leading them either. Because if you're, you're trying to truly pour time and energy into that person and they're not willing to step outside their comfort zone, but you continually just trusting their word and just blindly allowing them to continually lie to you, that's not demonstrating care to that person either. Sometimes love comes in a tough form and that means having honest conversations. So demonstrating care, I think, is one of the most important pieces of leadership that a lot of people miss. Like you're wanting to build your dream. You're wanting to build your financial freedom for your family. But in order for you to do that, you got to bring other people into your organization and how you keep people so you don't feel like you're always on this hamster wheel that's running and running and running and running, um, where you're having to always bring in new all the time, all the time, all the time. And you feel exhausted because all these people are falling off. It's because the first thing you should probably look at is, am I demonstrating care in the right place for this person? Next, as far as leadership goes, taking initiative. This is one that will, I can identify somebody that is, is, has leadership qualities or is willing to lead themselves by this very thing. If they're coming into my organization and they are constantly asking me for asking me questions. Now in the beginning, obviously I say, ask me questions all you want, um, because they're brand new. So you can't say like, you're not taking enough initiative when they first join, but if time's going on, and they're constantly utilizing you as a crutch, even though you've provided them with tons of research or not research, resources, you've given them resources. You told them, here are the places you can go. Here's what your back office looks like. Here's other leaders within our organization. Here's um, our team page where you can search through things and blah, blah, blah. These are all the Zooms that are going on. And they're not doing all those things themselves. And then they keep coming back to you. That's not taking initiative. Taking initiative is like, if you're having a question that, and you haven't exhausted all the avenues yourself first before going to your leader, then that's not taking initiative. So taking initiative would be like, if you have a question about what's an ingredient in the product, did you go to support first? Did you search the pages to see if there was any literature on them? Did you go to the resources tab to look at things first? Like, did you exhaust all your resource, resources that are at your fingertips first before then escalating to your leader? That's what you need to do. That's taking initiative. Taking initiative is when you are wanting to grow as a leader and like, you know, the next expansion piece of your leadership is is pouring into other people and like you want to get better at maybe speaking or something like that. Taking initiative is signing up for Zoom. Even if you're scared. I remember the very first time that I spoke on one of Lisa's Zooms. She she had put a post out in the dream team. This was a while back, like two years ago. <laughs> maybe even, yeah, two years ago. She had put out a post that said like, hey, I need somebody to speak on the Zoom with me. And trust me when I say that every ounce of me was like shaking. And you know, like when your stomach is in so many knots that you feel like you could literally vomit at that moment. That is how I felt. Um, but I knew within me that I needed to grow as a leader. And that meant doing more than just live videos in um, Stephanie's team page. Like I needed to get into a place that felt uncomfortable in front of more people. Because if I expect to be a 200K and have a large organization one day, I need to know what that feels like. And so I had to take initiative. So I said, sure, I'll do it. And I was terrified, you guys, absolutely terrified. And I, I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. Like, what am I going to do? So it's stepping into things, even if you don't, when, especially when you don't feel completely certain. So you can't be a hundred percent certain going into every situation and leaders always have to go first, right? That's why you follow somebody is because they went first. 
And if you're not willing to go first and take that initiative, you can't expect people to come onto your organization. And when you're telling them to do things like go live, but you never go live, like how do you expect them to respect the things that you're saying? you got to take initiative and be the one that goes first <clears throat> and be willing to do the research and be willing to find the answer before asking your leader for the answer. And when they're telling you do this thing, do the thing like you have to be the one that takes initiative first before you can ever expect to grow leaders on your team. So with that being those are those are some of the um, qualities that I think are in leadership when I think of a leader. They're trustworthy. <laughs> Get out of my head. They're trustworthy. They're disciplined. They demonstrate care. And they're taking initiative on a daily basis. When somebody encompasses all those things, I am willing to follow that person. So the first thing you have to do is hold up a mirror and ask yourself, am I, am I trustworthy? Am I doing the things that I say I'm going to do? Am I disciplined? Do I do the, the do on a daily basis? Am I demonstrating care to people? Even if, so like, let's say they're not on your team yet. Are you demonstrating care to your, the people that are on your social media that are your potential prospects? Or are you just engaging with people to check the box? Are you truly gen demonstrating that you care for that person? Are you taking initiative on a daily basis? So are you signing up for things even though you're terrified? Are you, you know, doing research? Are you self-developing, which is so important. And you guys, self-development is so much more than watching a 15 minute motivational video on YouTube. When I first started, that's what I thought it was about. Like, oh, I just need the motivation for today. That was my self-development. No, it's about examining yourself and understanding where is an area that I lack and then finding resources to help you with that. So if you're struggling with closure of sales, finding resources that are going to help you with that. If you're struggling with building a social media audience, finding resources on that. If you're struggling with holding people accountable on your team, find a resource on that. If you're struggling with, you know, bad mindset like finding a resource on that. That is self-development. That's taking initiative to grow yourself first so that you can help grow other people. So what does, I mean, what does leading look like on different levels? So I'm going to touch on leading on social media, leading within your team or organization, and then leading your customers. With those things in mind, with trustworthiness, discipline, care, and initiative in mind. So leading on social, if you want people to continually follow your page, how are you showing up on a daily basis? Are you trustworthy? So if you're like popping on and like, let's say you go into your stories and you're like, I'm going to go live today to provide X, Y, Z information. Like, are you actually showing up? Are you showing your life in your stories so that you can build trust with people? Because if you're I always give this example to my team because it, it drives me nuts. So when I go to like engage with people to build relationships with them and an organization who must not be named, there's people within that organization that I'm friends with. And I go to their stories to like engage with them because I feel like that's one of the best ways that you can connect with people because one, it goes right into their messenger and two, it gives you a peek into their life. I always say like your stories are like your really reality TV show. It's like behind the scenes, right? But all you see in their stories are things about their products. And you're like, how can I even build trust with this person if they're not showing me who they are? Like if they're saying like, buy my stuff and I'm like, but I don't even know who you are. Like, how are you building trust on your social media? Are you providing resources? Are you giving value to your people on social media? So if, if your focus is health and wellness, like, are you actually helping people beyond thrive, be healthy and well, because when they can trust you with other aspects, like other information, then you, they will trust you enough to buy from you. Right. So showing up on social media, showing up every single day, 
Are you disciplined? So you're, you're posting every single day. You're showing face every single day. Are you demonstrating care? Do you demonstrate that you care for your people? Asking them questions about them, not just you. You're demonstrating you care by providing them with value or information or education or entertainment or something like that. Are you taking initiative? So are you taking initiative on social looks like doing the things that are trending, even if it scares the crap out of you and you don't know what you're doing. So going live, doing reels, um, doing things on you know, your stories that you're not used to, like talking in your stories, things like that, taking initiative with your social media, doing all those things in the leadership category for social media. Next, I want to go into your team. I think we kind of covered all that when I talked about leading yourself, but are you trustworthy with your team? Like if you tell them, I'm going to do this, are you actually doing it? If you're saying like, hey, I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow, we can do a one-on-one -on -one, and then like you just fall off the face of the earth. I'm not saying I'm immune to this because I think part of leadership is you have to constantly be looking in the mirror. You have to constantly be looking at what are ways that I can improve? Am I slipping in a certain area um, in one of these categories? Where can I improve myself more? So like, if you're saying, hey, we're gonna do this thing, you better make sure you're, you're actually doing the thing that you say that you're going to do. Otherwise you're losing credibility with your team. Are you disciplined? So if, are you doing the things that you're asking your team to do that, that goes beyond just obviously trustworthiness. It's also that you're disciplined within your own business, because if they're watching you, because that's what, if they're bringing you on or you're bringing them on, they are trusting you with the right information. They are trusting you with their money, which is so important because that money could be like feeding their children. It could be buying school supplies. It could be doing all these things, but they decided to pour money into a business and trust in you as a leader. So are you demonstrating discipline yourself? Because how can you ever expect your team to be disciplined if you're not? Are you demonstrating care with that person? Do you check in with them? Do you even know why they're doing the business? Do you even know what their goals are? Do you even know what their fears are? What they're worried about? what their life is like. You have to demonstrate on a personal level care with your team if you're ever gonna get people to move. Because if you don't know anything about them and then you don't hear from them for a couple of days, like you don't know what's going on in their life. But if you don't demonstrate care, when, when whatever is going on in their life is resolved, are they even going to come back to you? Because you haven't even demonstrated care to them this entire time. Um, you're taking initiative with your team. So that means that you're setting up a team chat after your 12K, that you're um, giving your team resources that they can go to. You're taking initiative with the people that are on your team. Then let's go into customers. So are you trustworthy with your customers? If you're saying, or even potential customers, if you're saying I'm sending you out a sample, are you sending out a sample on time? If you're saying like, hey, I want to send you a gift because you're, you've are you been my customer for this long, are you actually sending them a gift? Are you giving them a discount when they're ready to order? Like, are you doing the things that you say that you will do? Like if you're, let's say this is, I think, a common one. You take so much time to talk about like the products and try to acquire this person as a customer. So you get them, right? And you're like, oh, I'm so excited for you to start thriving. Um, I, here's me and this person in this chat. So like, if you have any questions at any time, you can reach out to us in here, but then you disappear off the face of the earth. Like you're not even if, like, let's say they become a customer and then you're not even checking in with them. Like, are, did you really even care in the first place? Or was this just for your own personal gain? So are you trustworthy? Do you do the things that you say you're going to do? Are you disciplined? Are you actually following up with people before their auto ships run? Are you following up with them to see like, what are they liking? How are things going? Are the things that you can add? Are the things that you can tweak? Like if you're wanting to lead your customer base, you have to be disciplined in the things that you're doing with that person. Are you demonstrating care? Are you not only obviously offering a discount to people that come on, but are you showing your, your current customers that you even care about them, that they're important to you? Are you sending them thank yous? Are you sending them thank yous with like 
a thing of chill, you guys, how much does it really cost to send your customers a thing of chill, like a doll or something? Just do it because that demonstrates care and they will continually order. Even if like, cause we all know like the, the newness of thrive, like obviously after a little while, like you just get used to feeling so good. So then people sometimes think like, Oh, maybe do I don't really need this. And if you're never caring about that person, it's much easier for them to walk away from you because there's no emotional tie. There's no, you're not showing that they're a human being to you. So then like when they maybe not, they're not feeling the product so much right now or like whatever that might be, they're just like, eh, I don't really care about that person or buying from her or supporting her family with the business or whatever. I'll just go over here and try something else. So are you demonstrating care to your customers because they're human beings? Are you taking initiative with your customers? I think taking initiative kind of goes with discipline. Like, are you reaching out to them? Are you anticipating their needs? Um, Are you understanding, like reaching out to your customers this time of year, especially if they're moms and being like, hey girl, like school is about to come up. Is there anything you need from me? I know like you have to buy all these school supplies and stuff like that. I just want to throw you a discount so that you can still feel good going into a chaotic school year, but not, you know, feel like you're breaking the bank at the same time because it's expensive to start school. You have to buy all the supplies, all the things. But if you're just like hoping that every everyone still orders and everything's good, but you're not taking initiative to have that conversation to anticipate the things that might come ahead for them, that's not taking initiative. So reaching out to your customers and understanding like when it's Christmas time, are they going to continue to order? Is there something you can do to help them tweak? Can you maybe like push off their auto ship one more month? Because I can tell you, you just caring about your own personal sales and not taking the initiative to have a conversation about with people and saying like, and they're like, oh, I'm just not, I'm not able to order right now because I have to pay for all the school stuff. And you're like, you know what? I totally understand. I have three kids of my own. Let's just push it off for a month and I will check check back in with you and see how things are going. In the meantime, if you want to scale back with your Thrive so that you can save it until you're able to order the next time, take one capsule instead of two. Take half a mix instead of a full one every day. So then that way you can stretch it a little bit farther. So then when you're able to order, you can't, you'll, you'll, you won't have to go a day without thriving but um, you're just able to thrive until that point. So like demonstrating that you care, like it's, and taking initiative, having those conversations that feel uncomfortable sometimes because you're like, I don't know how they're gonna respond. How many times have you held yourself back from having a conversation because you imagined this response that they would say? And then when you actually gave yourself like the gumption to have the conversation, it didn't even go anything like the, the way the disaster that you had imagined it to go to. The only reason we're afraid to do things is because we're assigning an outcome to something that hasn't even happened yet. Demonstrate that you care about your customers, take that initiative and have that that conversation with them. Continuously follow up. If it hasn't been a while, like let's say they haven't ordered for a really long time, get over yourself (laughs) and just reach out to them as a person that cares, especially right now, it's August, kids are getting back to school. Like that is chaos, you guys. If you have moms that are your customers, take the initiative to reach out to them, even if they haven't ordered for like two months and say like, hey, I know that I didn't, I haven't checked in in a long time and that is on me. Take ownership of your business. That is on me. But I wanted to send you this, mood support patch because I know school is starting and I remember, you know, like I know it's chaotic and I just want you to feel good or I want you to know that I care or just even checking in with them that has no conversation related to Thrive at all. Demonstrating that you care. Um, so to sum it all up, I'm going to touch on the things again one more time and then we're going to go into a hundred days of peace. So How are like the leadership qualities again? Are you trustworthy? Are you disciplined? Are you demonstrating care? And are you taking initiative? So applying all those things 
to your social media, your team, your potentials, and your customers. That is leading yourself. So I think Tiffany is doing 100 Days to Peace. Is that correct? Yep, I'm pulling it up right now because my Facebook logged me out. So let oh. me... <laughs> and you actually remember your password? <laughs> yeah, because I just reset it. So yeah, just give me one minute, you guys. Um, I know that we have to choose a winner um, for somebody. There we go. For somebody who's never won before. Drop me in the comments. If you've never won after the reading, we'll pick somebody. All right, you guys, we are on day 10. The right kind of attitude. The spirit of God. The spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. 2 Timothy 1.7. If you want to defeat old man trouble, you'll need the right kind of attitude, the positive kind. So what's your attitude today? Are you fearful, angry, bored, or worried? Are you pessimistic, perplexed, pain, or perturbed? Are you moping around with a frown on your face? That's almost as big as the one in your heart. If so, God wants to have a little talk with you. God created you in his own image, and he wants you to experience joy, contentment, peace, and abundance. But God will not force you to experience these things. You must claim them for yourself. God has given you free will, including the ability to influence the direction and tone of your thoughts. And when God wants you to direct those thoughts, to whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. Philippians 4 8. So the next time you find yourself dwelling upon the negative aspects of your life, refocus your attention on things positive. The next time you find yourself falling prey to the blight of pessimism, stop yourself and turn your thoughts around. Today's quote is, we are either the masters or the victims of our attitudes. It is a matter of personal choice who we are today. Or, I'm sorry, who we are today is the result of choices we made yesterday. Tomorrow, we will become what we choose today. To change means to choose to change. That's John Maxwell. We shouldn't deny the pain of what happens in our lives. We should just refuse to focus only on the valleys. Charles Swindell, positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Zig Ziglar. For further reflect, reflection, look into Proverbs 4.23, 17.22, Philippians 3.13-14, and Hebrews 13.5. Today's prayer. Lord, I pray for an attitude that is Christ-like. Whatever my circumstances, whether good or bad, triumph or tragic, I let my response reflect a God-honoring attitude of optimism, faith, and love for you. Amen. Thank you, Tiffany. And thank you, you everyone. I'm sorry, Megan, you want to go ahead and pick a winner? Sure. Let me go to the chat. Mm. Let's go with Blaze Slee. I, I probably said that wrong. I'm so Blaise sorry. Sly. Blaze Sly. Perfect. Congratulations. If you are still waiting on a gift and have not heard anything, please send me a message. I have the graphics. So you can go ahead and choose what you want and get me your address. And Give Lisa some grace. She's been doing a whole lot of traveling. She does have a list and everybody that's won something will receive their prizes. She's sending them out like groups of two months at a time. So thank you very much and have a great day. Join us Friday for Chastity. Thank you, Anything everyone. Else, Megan? No, that was it. Just lead yourself first and everything else will follow. <laughs>